So, uh, I want to welcome you to this, our 27th film in our series. We have to check now, we've been doing so many. But it's the 27th Pattern of the Month film. And um, as always, I try to do uh, things a bit different than uh, the film before. And uh, today I was going to ask you, are you as crazy as I am? I carry all these flies every time I go fishing. And um, of course you need small flies and big flies and, and you need them to have different profile and uh, put them there. But also different color and uh, is color really important? Do fish see color? And these are the questions that, it, that, that are asked among tires all the time. And we know they see color, we don't know how they see color, but I'm absolutely convinced that color is one of the very important factors in choosing the right fly. And um, I've said it so many times that uh, it's all about the perfect drift to present the fly in the best way. Uh, but to present the wrong fly in a good way doesn't give you any fish or fewer fish. Uh, we need to pick the right one and color is essential. Um, when I do my little class uh, on perfect drift on how to catch as many fish as possible, um, I uh, take a little example and I will give you this example and it's dry fly fishing where I had a salmon that was rising up to six or seven, it took the seventh, six different bombers. And every time I presented it a couple of times, he came up, had a look, splashed on it, then he ignored it. Changing to a different color, he was interested again. And this kept on going until he finally took a fish. This was on the mighty Karlovka Falls uh, in Russia. And um, since the madman over uh, uh, east has done what he has, uh, there is no Russia this year for me. And uh, I think it could go, but it's a personal thing. I don't want to support what's happening there now. Anyway, uh, so color and um, I know in the last last <laughs> film I promised you we show you our facilities but it's now just a couple of days before the opening of the Norwegian salmon season and we've been so hectic and you don't want to see the mess so we decided to to um, to do that uh, in one of our future films instead uh, uh, maybe you would laugh but there are so many stuff coming in and there's uh, such, uh, so it's not a mess really, but there is a lot of packs going up and it's kind of hectic right now. But here we are in front of the vise to tie. And uh, what I'm gonna tie today is uh, not really maybe what's uh, known to be um, opening fly or a fly for uh, the heavy waters because I'm going to tie you a samurai and um, I'm going to tie you a Torish samurai uh, and the samurais have a very slim profile and normally in the early season we fish bulkier flies but the bright colored samurai can also be very effective on the early season so I decided to tie this for you now and um, we uh, can just start tying. I think I've, I have my little book. Maybe you've seen the book right in front of me. Um, I don't need to know the pattern, but uh, it's nice to show you how this is meant to be. It's meant to be a book where you take out the pattern you want to tie and then you can put it in front of you on the desk so you can uh, follow the pattern description uh, without 
too too much mess in the book and around the book or the book takes too much place uh, I know quite a few of you put your computer in front of you and watch this film and I'm grateful for all the good feedback on what we've been doing okay so enough talk let's start tying here now okay uh, today I'm gonna tie with our uh, fluorescent highly fluorescent very strong colored orange uh, extra small and our medium uh, silver it's the only one we do flakes with and um, people ask us why we don't have an extra small with flakes and the reason is that first of all you can't burn it so good the flakes will will uh, uh, destroy when you, when you melt it but also uh, the flakes will make a very small tubing quite brittle so we don't do that and I do a three centimeter uh, medium and I start by cutting an angle like I always do put it on uh, take the extra small and uh, when I choose color on the extra small, I've done it so uh, so I get some contrast or I never use the same color on the cone as I do on the extra small tubing. Uh, okay, and today again I'm on the 12 o and uh, today I'm going to use our fluorescent orange one. These are, this thread is good when you're doing thread heads too, when you want to have a bright head. But, um, just greasing it a bit. But uh, today it's also good because it will disappear better than a black thread with uh, my, in my dubbing. So what I do is I put a little bit of thread over the part I cut so the tubing will hold. The medium will hold the, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the medium will hold the extra small in a good way. And I back down the thread and I start like I do on a lot of my flies with some Mirage tinsel. And um, when I choose uh, colors here, when I made all these patterns and what I wanted is that I want the tube to be part of the pattern. I mean, I, I was the guy that started using uh, uh, colored tubing and it was quite ridiculous to have just a clear tube. So, uh, and then I let the tube be part of the body and also the mirage, which is like an old tag, to be part of uh, the whole pattern. So I back this down and I turn it so I double it, pull strong, and tie it in. Mirage is a fantastic material because it will pick up the colors in the material. If I put this on the little yellow piece I have, it turns yellow and orange, it turns orange. It's really neat material, I think. Okay, and since I want to build up the body, the next material is a little heavier and it's our um, uh, hollow braid. And I'm gonna use uh, the magma yellow hollow. And uh, same with all my uh, stuff or most stuff I tie in, I tie it in underneath. Uh, just because when you tie something in and you put some thread on it's going to be a little thicker and it's just neater to have that under than to have it on the side or on the top and I tie this in I build up the body uh, and since I want a rather slim fly I'm not backing down I could back down the, uh, the braid and come up again and and get a better taper or heavier taper but I don't do that tie it in don't cut too close better to have a little space there then I'm going to use my glitz glitz stubbing 
And when I uh, put the dubbing on, I have to think here because one of the things with the with the samurai design is that there's also dubbing, <coughs> sorry, in front of the wing. So I can't uh, work the thread, uh, work the dubbing all the way down to where I normally put the wing, because the wing is going to put in a little different place, a little bit further back. And you can see this very long fibered dubbing and it's very very easy to put on and i always back down the dubbing to cover the thread before i turn it and go front a little bit at the time makes it easy for you if i'll uh, just keep on dub here it's going to be impossible to tie this in so uh, it's better to work with fairly short thread and I build this up make sure I have maybe one centimeter uh, of um, the medium one I try to put only the hackles onto the extra small or the last hackle to make a stronger fly and then I brush and uh, you know I said our brush is the meanest brush on the market and I think it is it picks up the fibers really, really strong and compared to Velcro, uh, it's also a lot more durable. If you have a Velcro brush, you have to uh, change the Velcro every now and then. This, this is actually the same I used since we got it. Okay. When you, if you look when I was brushing, I brushed it down on the sides like this to make the top fairly flat. And then I take, I hold back these fibers, take my fingers and I can cut some of these that are too long. There's always one or two that's messing with the design or with the appearance and you can cut them afterwards, but you can also cut it now. Okay, so I'll take a little bit here uh, of soft hair and I'm using fox hair on this one and uh, take away the soft part. Normally I tie with about one centimeter wide like this, but samurai the wing is put more on top. So I make sure this is not too wide when I tie it in and it can be almost as long as the finished fly, maybe a little too long. And I look so I get the right proportions and I tie it in. And here I don't have to be careful with the thread at all because this is all going to be covered up with, uh, uh, with dubbing. Meaning the same when I cut this, it, it's not that important that I cut it close. Um, on my Samurais, I very seldom use flush. Uh, the flush that normally I want it underneath and uh, here the glitz will uh, give us the sparkle we need. But on a Samurai, just to see to show you you can do things a different way on a samurai that you want to fish early season you can take a little bit of angel hair and i actually take the heavy one the hd angel hair and i take a few fibers take that away and i put them on top make sure you take half as many as you want because you're doubling back Make sure they're spread over the wing and just back down the thread and tie them in. Taper. Make sure not to cut the hair, just cut the flash. Make sure they get uneven in length. Otherwise they can come together in the water and they might stick together and you're not going to get the appearance you want. One and two, a little long, 
I can just trim them like that. Okay, looking good. I'll do a bit of orange hair. And here I'm choosing a quite dark orange color. It's like a burnt orange. And uh, I here use goat. Look at it, so it's good. And um, this should be a little bit heavier than the yellow. Uh, if you work it uh, two thirds or three fifths, doesn't really matter. Make sure this is longer than the yellow. Put it in on top. See that this is well tapered and uh, that it covers up the yellow and tie it in. And again, I can put quite a bit of thread on here. It doesn't really matter. Look at the shape. Looks good. Very few strands here. Make them swing in a good way and uh, cut it off. And it's the same here. I can, yes, don't need to be so very accurate here. Make sure I get the strands away from where I have the extra small. So uh, uh, the cone will be as tight in towards the medium as possible. Okay, and uh, jungle cocks. I have one here, I thought I had another one too. And um, it seems like my Cytus is not here now. I think, oh, here it is. Always use uh, legal feathers. And uh, maybe I should say that you should actually carry your Cytus when you go fishing too. It's just as illegal to take flies without the Cytus through custom somewhere in the world than as it is to take uh, the actual feathers or capes. Okay, and I start with the one on my side. Form it a little bit on my thumbnail so it will curve the way I want. Um, and I tie it in. Cut it off and uh, I do uh, the same on the other side. Make sure it follows the wing in the right way. And um, look from above or turn the vise if you want and tie it in. Make sure the ribbon looking good and cut off. And um, it looks good and even. <clears throat> and um, uh, I've been using these films to show you new stuff when our tools came out and the brush and the cutter and uh, our uh, plier. But it's a bit dangerous because we work with so many new things all the time. And uh, um, it sometimes takes a lot longer time to get things to you guys than uh, the plan is or what I want. But I want to show you that we are now very close with our jungle cock. They will be presented like an eye like this and there will be different uh, colors and different size and they are in a much thinner uh, material than before, meaning that they will follow the fly in a much better way. And uh, I'm not sure you can see it, but they are pre-curved, meaning you have a left and a right feather 
uh, on this and um, says 40, 40 feathers here will be different uh, but we are very close with this and um, <clears throat> since these are the only two eyes I still I have I don't want to cut them and uh, tie of them now but I tied with these before and they prefer they perform in a super way actually so soon all of you mailing asking when are they here but it's pretty close now okay so a little bit of glue and uh, I use support with the finger and I put a little glue on top and here I can actually put a little more glue than I normally do because uh, I have so much space here for this okay so what am I going to do now then the different thing with the uh, samurai is that I actually now keep on with the dubbing and the dubbing here will help create that drop form uh, I'm gonna put on a lot and I know I I said many times that putting on dubbing you need to make it look overdressed or it will look too skinny when you brushed it and uh, here even more so because this is gonna look like I have gone crazy uh, maybe I am we're all crazy all salmon fishermen are a bit crazy aren't we if you ask normal people we are but I'm putting on quite a bit here and I make sure to go and put this on to all of my little bit more all of the medium tube just a little bit here and I'll be ready and I work the thread down just on the edge on the medium again take the brush and make sure now to cover up the jungle cock and uh, the wing or it will be destroyed and then I just brush this heavy and it's when you do these you understand how big the difference is by using our our uh, bits tying tool brush it's really mean brush and I comb it a little bit backwards like this and it's gonna be really bulky make sure the put a couple of turns of thread and then I take my scissors and I take away some of these that are maybe too long or too curly and what I've done is that I created the drop form that is really really translucent and also here when it comes to color this is uh, very colorful and um, maybe you think I have all the answers I don't why yellow and why orange this is a fly that's made to be seen in murky water what is best seen is it the orange or is it yellow or what is best seen I think this combo where you have yellow and orange is seen very well in the water um, which one is best I couldn't really tell you I would say on a sunny day maybe the orange on a dull day maybe the yellow but I don't really know but I know this is a good combination so on most my samurais I put uh, only soft tackle and on the darker ones I put just the black soft tackle and very few terms but again I want to make this since it's an early season samurai I want to make it a bit bulkier so I'm gonna use an um, ostrich hackle and I'm gonna use it the same way I always do uh, I just create a little triangle where I think the fibers have the right length 
and uh, I cut it and this is the triangle I just tie in so I don't let go of the feather while I put that on and here I can put more thread if I want but the important thing here is that I double this since on a few patterns I strip one side and then you don't need to double and I strip it most of the time when I need few fibers or when I want to have two colors uh, here I'm going to use only one I double three fingers let the tube slip in and tie it in and when I tie this in all fibers are coming one side of the center and that is all that's doubling doubling is all about take it hold it in make sure I put my little tangled here tangle them up before I let my thread go in where I want to secure this and then I just tie it in don't need so many turns and then I cut this and make sure I cut it close but not cutting away too many of the of the fibers couple going the wrong way I just hold them back and tie them in okay so when you look at ostrich in the vise they're gonna look pretty different than if you compare them in the water because what happens is that this will slim down and be a lot less uh, give lots of lots less uh, volume to the fly okay so I want one more feather and I'm gonna use a uh, soft tackle and uh, here I have one with fairly long fibers I can use them uh, shorter too but uh, the important is that I get the, the color here I want this to be super bright fly and I treat this the same way I take away some of the soft and then I create a little triangle some of these are a bit tricky to tie with but and I just hold this in and tie this in and uh, here I can wind it with my plier or I can do it by hand I prefer hand actually I use pliers when it's absolutely necessary but otherwise I uh, put my hackles on by hand and I just double them back tie them in and they're gonna be look a little bit messy because they're so soft here I'm a bit careful with putting the thread on make sure I don't put the thread the turns in front of each other because then I can't press down the cone uh, I put them on top like this I try to do that most of the time when I tie and then uh, we end this yellow orange fly with the uh, fluorescent uh, yellow turbo and I just put it on should fit there sometimes I use a little plier but this was uh, correct and it needs to be very tight and that's why you need the plier sometimes and especially on these that have a bit of dye on uh, sometimes I hear that they people say that they don't fit I mean the the, the dye on the cone takes a bit away from the diameter and you need to be able to cut this uh, at, uh, extra small at an angle to slide it in and maybe pull it down with a little plier but it's the only way to to make those colors we can't have a cone where the hole is bigger because then we might end up in the problem that um, some of our competitors have that the cone is not tight on and the cone starts to work on the tubing and the tubing will break so that's why we work on this uh, very flexible tube 
and make sure it's super tight. Maybe not as easy, but it makes way stronger flies. Okay, simple tying, but a lot of torque. Take a little glue again, hold back the fibers, put uh, some support and put a little glue a bit away from the uh, hackles. And then I take my thread and I pick up the glue. When I press down the cone, I can, see this is very tight, I can make sure that I turn it and spread the glue a bit more. Here I have one fiber I don't want to have glue in that. And I take this and I twist and press it down, spreading the glue onto the around the, the thread that I just tied this in with. Take the fly out of the vise, make sure it's pressed down, hold back everything. Use support by the fingers and cut this and about three millimeters. The good thing with using support is that I can really choose how long I want to have this. And maybe I have to excuse, I have a white lighter here, but should have been yellow or orange. And I just melt this down slowly and make sure it's tight down to the cone and make sure I have a really good hold for my leader. By holding it like this, the fits tubing opens up and I get that hole. Few seconds and uh, we are ready. And as you can see, we created a fly with a wing that is made of fairly straight hair. It is quite slim where the dubbing and the hackles will help creating this little drop form that I'd like to have on all my flies. Okay, hope you like it. Hope you have some really colorful flies in your box. Sometimes, uh, even summertime or maybe more at, at fall, uh, a really colorful fly can be super effective. But most of all, early season, murky waters and uh, aggressive, bright, aggressive fish, uh, a fly like this can be super, super effective. And um, as before, we do the packs where we have half a dozen flies in different sizes and we do our pattern pack with all the materials to tie at least 10 of those and um, we have changed a few things on our web so I'll hope now it's again possible to sub subscribe to those or you can buy single packs. Um, but it's a neat way if you want to try this pattern. Get a pack, you have all the materials that you need to tie it. And um, did it turn out good? I think so. What did you think? Okay, our 27th pattern. Pattern of the month. And uh, it's one of the brighter ones we tied. Um, catch most of my fish on flies where I harmonize the color of the fly with the color of the water. But here it's quite the opposite. It's about getting the flies to be seen as good as possible. Torish Samurai got its name from the classic fly, classic feather wing Torish, uh, which has to be the same color combinations with the yellow and orange. That's why I picked the name from the classic fly from this design. I hope you liked the tying and I hope that now in a few days, uh, if you have the time to tie some or get some from us, 
you will be able to uh, loosen one of these in the corner of the mouth of uh, the biggest fish in the river and I uh, hope you release it too uh, we're facing for sure one tricky salmon season with fewer fish in the rivers and uh, we need to keep on doing this and let our kids and grandkids keep on doing this too so thank you and stay strong and tie on